Hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Kenneth Hardcastle. I'm Anna Karras. And we're here, hopefully, on the uh, library's Facebook page talking about Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. So, uh, in this book, Janie returns to Eatonville, Florida, surrounded by rumors that Miss Starks could run away with a boy like Tea Cake was news enough, but now where is he? Her friend Phoebe comes over, and Janie tells her what happened by explaining her whole life story. You'd think your friend knew probably at least a little bit of that. But uh, ultimately, this is a story of three marriages amidst a search for uh, Janie herself. And it's set in central and southern Florida in the 1910s and 20s. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's talk about it. Okay. So, um, we put out some discussion questions last week, which I hope you saw. If you didn't, we're going to go through them one at a time, and we'll discuss what we thought. So, uh, had you uh, read this book before? I had not, and I'm so glad I did because there were a lot of familiar names in there. Um, place names that I now know of, like, uh, um, well, they talked about um, Belle Glade and um, Clewiston and uh, Lake Okeechobee. Um, mm -hmm. they, they spoke a lot about um, a lot of place names in Florida that are, you know, pretty old considering the old oldness of florida which is <laughs> pretty young pretty as a, young as a state as a yes but um it it's uh it was it was nice and um i have to admit that it took me a little bit of time to get into the flow of the book because of the written vernacular of the speech mm -hmm. but after it's it's kind of like it was kind of like reading Shakespeare for me, you know. After you got into it a little bit, then it just kind of flowed along, and uh, but it was slow going at first. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm never going to finish this book on time. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. So I read it in high school, or I was supposed to anyway. <laughs> um, I, all that I really remembered was the gossipy intro slash framing device. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, and then the snippet of description of the hurricane that drops the title of the book. Right. Their yes. eyes were watching God. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't recall any emotional reaction whatsoever, and it turns out that you don't really give things a fair shake in high school. No, you really don't. <laughs> um, yeah, and obviously the, one of the difficult points uh, you would, that would turn you away from this book is the dialect uh, that almost requires you to read the book aloud or at least think about reading it aloud in order to understand what they're saying. I can see that. That's a good idea. Um, as a high school, you don't you don't have time for that. You don't have time to think <laughs> about that. <laughs> but it's different when you're reading for pleasure or you're reading for a book club. Um, and I quite enjoyed parsing the dialect and trying to use the context clues to figure out. Yeah, there were a couple of words the in words there that, didn't that make sense. yeah, I didn't understand. The only one that really threw me uh, and I, that I had to look up was um, Meridy. Okay. Uh, which uh, they were, it was used to describe a certain kind of skin tone. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's what that one was about. But freezeology, you could you could figure that. You know, it has freeze in the title, so mm -hmm. you know it's yeah. somebody being cold to you, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And so it was it was always fun trying to figure those out. Yeah. So the first question that we have is, why does Janie choose to tell her story, story only to her best friend, Phoebe? How does Phoebe respond at the end of Janie's tale? Um, well, so uh, she told that story. So that was part of, um, and people are going to gossip, and that's what she came back knowing. It doesn't matter what they say. All that matters is what, uh, what you do and what you know. Um, so she tells that to Phoebe. She tells it just to Phoebe just because... They're friends. Well, they're friends. Yes. <laughs> they're good friends. Yes. Um, and so Phoebe so Phoebe has all the information and can do with it what she wants to. Uh, but it's not... You know, nobody else has to know all the things that happened. Yeah. Do you think Phoebe will go back and tell everybody else? Some people... She'll tell some people. You know, she'll tell some of the facts, but she's mm -hmm. not going to sit down and go through the whole story. Because... Uh, you know, everybody doesn't need to know all the things that no, happened. No, but I mean, like, the, the pertinent parts, like what happened to Tea Cake and, you know, right. why is she coming back all alone in a pair of coveralls and <laughs> when she left 
dressed to the nines on a train. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, she'll just say, "Oh, he died in he died in a hurricane." Yeah, that's pretty much uh, what's mm-hmm. going to happen. Spoiler alert! Sorry about that. If you uh, haven't finished the book <laughs> haven't yet, finished the book. Well, you should. It's a good one. Okay, and that's not the whole story. So. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Which we might uh, go over by the end of this. Uh, by the end of this exchange. So but how does Phoebe respond at the end of Janie's tale? Um, well, what do you think? Well, um, just... I thought, I don't know. Um, kind of a broad question, but, yeah. you know, she, she responded with, you know, shock about the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the total ongoings. And, right. Because, um, I mean, three marriages in one life when you're only in your 40s is, is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what did you think about the first marriage? How she just walked away from it, never got a divorce, just. Oh, um, yes, no, it's skipped uh, out and skip out, and never come back, and yeah. you know he he seemed to be kind of expecting that. Yeah, well, agree. she she kind of gave him a hint that it might be happening. Yeah, and uh, he responded the only way he could. So. Um, Got a different notification. Yep. Don't think that was about us. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> we're doing this live and we're watching you watching us. <laughs> okay, so um, let's go on to the next question yeah, anyway. next question. Did you like Janie and did you admire her? Uh, yes, obviously. Uh, sh- I really liked how she lived her life. Uh, kind of walking that line between doing what you have to do to... Uh, keeping up appearances, and doing what you want to do, ultimately marrying Tea Cake and enjoying her life with him. Um, it wasn't a perfect life with Tea Cake. No. Oh, no. But uh, it was it was what she wanted. Yeah, and that's true. And she was living her life on her own terms. I mean, when she married Jody, or Joe, however mm-hmm. you want to call it, um, we thought that... Um, yeah, and she just walked away from her first marriage. Uh, it was something that uh, was, I don't know, it just, I, I thought, wow, you didn't even get a divorce? You just left with <laughs> well, nothing? But, um, I mean, she didn't have the life that she was expecting to have when she went off with Jody. Right. He was a, uh, he was a big talker, and uh he expected her to be in her place and I think that um, I don't know it was just it was kind of sad that she let him grind her down I mean granted you know this is a different era that we're talking about Mm -hmm. you know um, expectations were very different um, in marriages in the 1910s and 1920s Mm -hmm. so um, you know we can't expect you know a woman to um, be as assertive until the end of her marriage um, went right before he died and she got assertive with him and he didn't know what to do it kind of destroyed him I think it was probably it, it wasn't instrumental in his death but I think it kind of pushed him over the edge that uh, kind of uh, kind of led led there I yeah guess. yeah but um yeah I admired her um, I think that she took a lot of risks that um, most people in their life don't um, <laughs> when when Tea Cake spent her two hundred dollars and she was like, yeah, on a party like, that she didn't even get to go to. <laughs> and she was like, well, okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm just glad you're back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and hey, take me to any parties you go to. In that's the right. If you're gonna spend my money, at least let me join in. <laughs> So that was, yeah. um, so that, was, that was life on her own terms. Yeah, you know, that was life on her own terms. And yeah, she... To she, an extent, but... She became more assertive um, as her... As the years with Tea Cake passed on. And I think that when she went back to Eatonville at the end of the book, or at the beginning of the book... Both. What, <laughs> either and both. Um, that uh, she would um, ultimately live life on her own terms again. And... I don't know if she'd marry again or not. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a, that's a question, question mark at the end. Yeah. And I think she would if she wanted to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if she found somebody else 
Not, not not necessarily like tea cake, but... But if it was on her terms. Yeah, as long as it's on her terms, yeah. she would. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Hurston uses nature, the pear tree, the ocean, the horizon, the hurricane, not only as a plot device, but also as a metaphor. How do these function as both? Um, so that one's really interesting. Uh, the imagery of the pear tree is introduced early on, um, you know... Almost immediately. Yeah, almost immediately when she's in the flower of youth, uh, you know, it's, it's used to kind of hammer down that metaphor. And it's introduced, um, you know, at every point through the, at most points throughout the story. Uh, reintroduced, it's talked mm -hmm. about again. Um, you know, after, after her marriage, uh, after she leaves the marriage with Logan, uh, after she, uh, after uh, Jody dies, uh, and so it just keeps coming back to that. And then again with the hurricane, um, uh, it's kind of used as a, uh, a foreshadowing of uh, what's going to happen between uh, Janie and Tea Cake. Mm. Uh, so it, you know, it's, you, know, every, you, you see uh, the, the animals leaving the area and you see the Indians leaving the area. Mm. And uh, so, you know, it's the uh, just calm before the storm. And it's also, you know, nature that ultimately takes tea cake's life anyway. Right. I mean, it wasn't the hurricane, it was something else. But <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna tell you what that is. Or right? maybe we will accidentally. Yeah, maybe we okay. will. Um, okay. So um, the novel's action begins and ends with two judgment scenes. Why both? Why are both groups of people judging her? Is either correct in their assessment? So at the beginning, we have um, all the folks in Eatonville sitting around on a porch, and they watch Janie Starks. Janie Starks, as they last knew her, I guess she was Janie Woods after Woods. that. Yeah, um, come walking back through town, dressed in pair of coveralls and going back to her house and you know she's alone she left with another man and uh less than i think it was about nine months after she had been widowed and that was a scandal mm -hmm. um but um, walking into town about uh, a year or two later yeah i would uh, yeah i think yeah it was a couple of years later um and we have we have these people who cast judgment upon her um saying oh you know she's all alone she's dressed grubby you know she's you know where where's her man where she got any money left you know did he take it all you know they're making all sorts of assumptions about her and uh i guess it's just the nature of people you know mm -hmm. they, they just want to they want to chew the fat on things and when there's something sensational like Janie starks who was always a controversial figure in town um I guess it was, it's, it's only human nature that they would talk about it. If they're correct in their assessment, obviously, no, they don't know the whole story. They're they just don't guessing. know anything. They don't know anything, <laughs> yeah. And then at the end, um, well, there's a uh, trial. Right. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so there's, there's a trial. There's a trial. Mm -hmm. um, and the people there, uh, so, so there's uh, kind of the the white crowd at the trial and the black crowd at the trial, um, neither of whom know any details, basically, uh, ultimately it comes to the only correct conclusion, given the facts we're presented. Um, but, uh, you know, there's still a lot of judgment going on on both sides. Um, and that's kind of that's kind of an interesting thing to talk about that we'll probably mostly reserve for next week. Yeah. Uh, you know, sure. When it's going to be more spoiler territory. Right. <laughs> but finish the book because yes. it's a good one. It is a good one. It's um, it's it's not a very long book, um, and uh, I, I found it to be one of those books that I can see why it's a classic that has endured because I thought it was beautifully written only about 200 pages yeah um and it had a lot of interesting things to say about class 
and race and they were all told from a point of view of a black woman from the 30s i think well it was written in what 1940 uh, so it was written in the late 30s. Late 30s. It's right. written 37. in the late 30s. Takes place, uh, the main action takes place in the late 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's the uh, the hurricane of Okeechobee right. uh, in 1928 yes. is okay. what's depicted at the sure. end. Um, so there's one more question left on here. Okay. Uh, Janie journeys through three marriages. What initially attracts her to each man? What causes her to leave? And what does she learn from each? Okay, right. so let's go so through we'll take you through one. it. Yeah. So uh, her her mother her grandmother attracts her to Logan Killix, and uh, that uh, they she she made the union and uh, they you know it, nothing about Logan Killix attracted Janie. Interestingly, <laughs> I thought you know with the book that we read last month, the uh, Book Woman of Troublesome Creek, mm-hmm. how both um, Janie's grandmother and um, oh God, what was her name? Cussie Mary. Cussie Mary. And Cussie Mary and her father were both um, locked in a struggle of, you're going to get married before I die so I can make sure that you're taken care of. Mm-hmm. And neither one worked out very well, did they? <laughs> <laughs> it's, probably a, it's probably a common theme of arranged marriages. Like it's, it's a commentary on arranged marriages in the United <laughs> States, yes. Um so, um, yeah, I mean, they, she didn't really spend much time on Logan in the right. book. And then she leaves him uh, because uh, he's boring. He's not, he's not what she wanted. He, she doesn't love him. She wants something else from her life. Mm-hmm. And she's not going to work on a farm. So she, uh, and so that's she what runs away with. He was getting ready to have her do. Right. He was out to find another mule so she, she could plow the fields alongside him. So she runs away with Jody Starks. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, so what attracts her to him is that he's got a drive, he's got a vision, mm-hmm. he's got a plan for his life. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, that plan for his life uh, doesn't involve her having any fun. No. Uh, just her, she needs to mind the store or stay home and cook and things. Mm-hmm. Um, and she does that. She does that for 20 years. Yeah, 20 years. <laughs> um, so it's, kind of, it's uh, the mix of that mix of obligation and you know she's she's got a nice life nice ish i guess they have uh, you money. know they have they, money she's they have their you know nice house a nice house um Business. so so you know she kind of thinks that maybe this is all there is and maybe that's all she can have for a little bit um and then when he dies uh she changes she, her mind she moves she you know mourns him as appropriate as people would want her to do. But there was that place in the book that she, when she was talking to Phoebe right before she left um, with Tea Cake, was that, um, you know, she, uh, it was nine months now and she wasn't going to wear black anymore because she wasn't mourning him and she wasn't grieving and why should she um, fake it? Right. And why should she do such a thing when she wanted to live her life so and then tea cake is a fun person uh that she likes genuinely and Mm -hmm. so that's why she's attracted to him and then they get married on that string and that works and doesn't it it goes pretty well pretty well i mean he's he, he doesn't they they don't know each other very well when they get married um well she didn't she didn't know any of her husbands very well when they got married no. so there were always surprises coming up um we find out after um she marries tea cake that he's a gambler and uh <laughs> takes all takes, takes all her money not, not all of her money she puts she keeps most of it in the bank uh hit she had two hundred dollars and he just stole that one day and uh had a party without her knowledge and then uh, use the remaining twelve dollars to win three hundred and twenty-two. Yeah. I think win win some back, wins the it back for game. her, uh, and then uh, so that kind of like sets a sets a certain tone. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's oh girl, you got you should mm, red flag. Red flag. Yes. <laughs> yep. The second that your money is gone and your husband disappears for twenty four hours, that would pose a uh, a warning bell for me. <laughs> Yep, mm-hmm. um, but I, but he returns it, and he's like, "Okay, keep the keep it, put it away, 
uh, and you'll live only off what I give right. I give you. Well, that, right. so that's a problem in itself, but also, um, you know, it's a term that she accepted and wanted. And, and uh, I think like. that after the initial, um, you know, taking of the money and the, oh, by the way, I'm a really good gambler um, <laughs> thing came out, I think that they were pretty honest with each other. Yeah. Except for the whole business with them. Um, oh, what was the the girl's name that was flirting with Tea Cake when they were in? Uh, I don't Everglades. remember her name either. But I don't that either. Happened. But yeah, but so there was there was another woman that was trying to uh, wedge her way between Janie and uh, Tea Cake, and it uh, it did not end well um, for the girl. Or, but I mean, that was it. Wasn't that he was being dishonest with her? Right. He might have been being dishonest with himself. Yeah. <laughs> Which, at least he wasn't being dishonest with her. But, I mean, I think that they had, of all of the marriages that she had, that was probably the most authentic. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a marriage for love. And, yeah. Um, and you know, even marriages for love don't have doesn't have smooth sailing all the time. So. Right. Yeah. Um. What causes her to leave? We'll leave that one unanswered. Yes. Uh, so what did what does she learn from them, though? What does she learn from them? I think from her first husband, she learns that there's more to life than um, just doing what you're told. I and love she, and love doesn't come with marriage. No, love That's doesn't come Is with that marriage. People told her that people told her, or, or you know maybe like culture told her mm. that love would come with marriage, and she learns that's not the case. Um, you know, and when it when it's not the case, she also, and they're also like, oh, well, it's not important anyway. But she disagrees. She does, and goes on to find, you know, something that works for her. And I think the second marriage is she she re, that lesson is reiterated that um, um, you know, you you don't always um, you don't always get what you want. Or mm-hmm. what you think you're getting is maybe not necessarily what you're getting. You know, you, you uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm explaining that right or not. I'm not even sure where I'm going with it, so. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> We're live. We're live. Hey, hi. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, the book covers some important topics like uh, black feminism, racial mm-hmm. issues, toxic masculinity, but mostly just as they relate to... Um, uh, mostly just as they relate to her own revelations about herself. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a journey of self discovery, and how to how you know you, you yourself want to operate in the world, or how she herself how she... wanted to. Mm-hmm. And I think she grew as a person. Yeah, definitely. It was an interesting, and I can't take credit for this, but. Um, I have a friend who is an English professor at FGCU, and she was telling me about um, some of the things that, like, some of the themes in there, like where Janie is when when she comes back at the beginning of the book, and the, the part that's framing framing the story, where she's telling her story to Phoebe. Um, she starts out on the back steps, and then she moves to the porch, and then she moves around to the front of the house, and those different places all kind of reflect where she is in her life story and i thought that was really interesting that's really cool yeah yeah i'll have to look for that Uh um not 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 mine (laughs) i'm not that good but yeah anything else burning that you want to discuss ultimately i'm always just astounded when a book can reach across a century and show me what it means to be in the literary pantheon yeah. Um, so this book is incredible. It is. And, uh, you know, everybody should take a look at it. Uh, though, you know, don't force people to read it in high school because that doesn't work. Um. <laughs> okay. So anything else? Just, just completely tangential. Was there anything in high school that you read that impacted you? That's a great question. Probably. You don't remember? I mean, like anything <laughs> that was assigned to you, do you remember not being able to put it down? I'd have to think about it. Okay. Um, I have two. One was To Kill a Mockingbird that I read, and I could not put that one down. And the other one was um, Lord of the Flies, mm-hmm. which I read 
in one inhalation. I have vivid memories of uh, uh, Scarlet Letter. Okay. And that Heart, one, of, and Heart of Darkness, assigned. too. Was, Both of those. I was assigned to read that one, but I don't think I ever actually um, did. I don't know if I necessarily liked either of those, but yeah. I, did, I read them. Oh, well, Grapes of Wrath, if you want to talk about it. I mean, that was one that I was assigned in AP English when I was a senior, and I hated that book. <laughs> hated it. Yeah. It was terrible. I mean, I can recognize him as a, uh, as a good writer. I, I mean, as an amazing writer, but I did not like the book at all. So... Anyway. But we liked Their Eyes Were Watching yes, God. Yes, yes. Read. And you should uh, give it a look. I'm trying to. There we go. It's hard <laughs> to do on camera when you're watching yourself. So, so thanks very much. Yes. Um, thanks for joining us. And I we hope to see you next week. Uh, on the Zoom meeting. Let's, uh, so, let's leave uh, Anna's email here yeah, in the I'll, chat. In the comment box <laughs> below. We will leave my email address that you can um, send me an email, and I will send you a link to the meeting. Okay? It's on Zoom. Yes. So, anyway, thank you very much. Oh, he's typing. There it is. You got it? Okay. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks very much. We'll see you next see week. See you later. Bye.